It's Georgia Rose from Zancuda. And it must be Monday night at 7 o'clock because here I am in Paradise Studios in beautiful downtown Massapequa. We will not have any audio problems tonight because we have a whole new audio system here. Thank you so much to my producer, Bobby Lacerra. So if you're looking to do a podcast, you better get your butts down here to the uh, Paradise Studios because we've got all new stuff, a lot of sets. We just did another new set and come and do a podcast. Just don't do it about my stuff. <laughs> just kidding. So anyway, <laughs> I was just talking to Bobby and I was telling him that I'm actually naturally funny. We have an intern here at the studio, uh, Vinny, got his name right, that does a TikTok. What's the name of your TikTok, Vinny? It's just his name. Vinny TikTok? It's a little hard to spell. Oh, Vinny Italian name, something on TikTok. But he's a budding comedian and he is, uh, we'll find him. I'll get you the thing. I'll put it in the comments. Um, but tonight I want to talk a little bit about the astrology. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But I will spend a little bit of time on that because I know you guys like to know what's going on in the week. We do have a couple of major things happening. But I want to talk about tonight a lot about cliques and friend groups that kind of go south or that, you know, sometimes we start out with a great friend group and then we end up feeling not so good about it or excluded or something. Because a lot of my clients in, you know, the spiritual world and also um, the clients that I coach in the business world are experiencing a lot of these type of exclusions. And I have my own theories about that. So we'll talk about that too. And then I want to get to card pulls pretty quickly tonight because I know that's why a lot of you tune in and I want to see what the uh, energy is saying and what the card pulls are saying tonight. So first, let's start out really quickly with some astrology. I'm not going to go through the whole week. Um, last week, I gave you a little bit of a summary about what the August energy is going to be like. I will tell you this week is going to be definitely a rocking and rolling week. We've got those North nodes that are fairly new in Aries and Libra. That's giving us a lot of energy, a lot of forward momentum in themes such as relationships, in themes such as dependence, interdependence, codependence. What is your um, strength in your life? Where do you find sovereignty? Where do you really exemplify and activate your own agency, your control over yourself? And where do you give that up? And where do you allow other people to come in and be more powerful maybe than even you are and overtake you and overrun you? And that's also why I wanted to talk about clicks tonight, because I feel like that's also a big part of um, the click energy and the energy of friend groups a lot of times where we start to lose our power. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But with those nodes in Aries and Libra fresh in there, you're going to keep those things that cycle lasts about 18 months and it, what we call in the astrology world, the I am cycle. Why is that? Because Aries is all about me, me, me. And Libra, which is the axis, is all about shared and balance. So you're going to have those power struggles between being healthily detached and a little bit selfish in a good way about people who are too selfish and always putting themselves first or in a hurry to be first in line, et cetera. And then you're also going to see some energy come in where it makes you more powerful because you're able to balance more with that Libran energy. Venus in Leo is retrograde and it's going to be retrograde for a really long time. So that retrograde Leo, uh, Venus in Leo is bringing back old loves, old family situations, old um, cycles of things that we value. Think about where you were, um, you know, about, I'd say four years ago and eight years ago, mostly eight years ago, because we're ending a Venus cycle. We're actually going to be starting a brand new Venus cycle, a new eight year cycle of love. So, and things that you value. So think about eight years ago, what were you trying to manifest? What were your dreams, your hopes, the things that you really, really value in your life? What was your romantic life like? What were you trying to manifest? What were the changes that brought you to your passions about the things that you're super passionate about that make you feel powerful and loved and real? Those are the things that are going to come up again now. And we're going to be closing out that cycle in order to go into a whole new eight year cycle with the themes of what is valuable to us, the things we value most and the things we love and want in the partnerships. So this is a really powerful time where we can find a lot of forward momentum, but also a lot of healing space in our relationships if we really do the work. Um, so remember that we begin a, eight year, a new eight year cycle in the things of romance, money, love, the things that are so important to us and really heartfelt. Because Sunday, this Sunday coming in, 
is what we call Kazemi, when Venus and the sun meet up in the sky. Venus is actually right between Earth and the sun. And on Sunday, it's exact where we have the sun and Venus and the Earth aligned at the exact same degree of the zodiac. And so when that happens, at that 22 degree mark, actually, when that happens, sun and moon are in Leo, Earth is, is, got, is right between there, and Venus is in that section of the sky too. So the Earth is right between Venus and the su sun. So we have the light of Venus and the light of the sun coming into Earth at exactly the same points in the sky. And what that means symbolically is that we have a golden sun opportunity to manifest what we really want in our lives as far as the themes I just mentioned, love, money, and the things that we truly value and that are valuable to us. So I would definitely do a ritual, uh, especially towards Sunday, to see what kind of things you can manifest. Very, very powerful time. We also have 8-8 eight, eight this week. I believe that's on tomorrow, actually. And that's what a lot of astrologers, a lot of spiritual people call Lion's Gate, because it's actually when Sirius aligns with the Sphinx in, and the uh, pyramids in Giza, on the Giza Plateau. And traditionally, that's the, known to be the rise of the planet Sirius and the star in the sky. It's when it's the most close to Earth and the most powerful. So a lot of people feel that's also a fabulous time to manifest, especially when that happening in Leo, which is ruled by the sun, which is our vitality. So it's a great week for health, romance, love, money, and manifesting the things we want. And while we put those desires into a written journal or a note that we keep on a sacred altar, or we just do a meditation to visualize those things, in the next 18 months, you're going to see the changes and the occurrences and the events happen that will start to move energy into those things. Now, that could be a breakup, what I like to affectionately recall a breakaway, because usually when we undergo a breakup in energy like this, especially because Venus will be square to Uranus, the planet of sudden change this month, when we see an energy like this combined with all of this energy of Venus retrograde and Mercury also going into shadow to be retrograde as well, we see a lot of old relationships and old conflicts come back up again to be fully either restored, revitalized, or removed. So don't be surprised in this energy if you do see breakaways and breakups, but you'll also see breakthroughs. So where that goes depends on what you really want to manifest in your life because your dream and desire is absolutely powerfully going to come into reality if you dream it and wish it so. And if you show the universe that that is truly what you want through your actions. So you can't wish for a bunch of money and then squander money. You can't wish for the love of your life and then be a witch to everybody that you have relationships with. You have to show the world what you truly desire through your actions. And never is that more powerful than right now. And I would strongly suggest all of us doing this. So do some kind of a ritual on Sunday because that Venus um, Kazemi is such a powerful thing. Um, it's happening on world points, which I think this week, especially around the 8th, the 9th, I think there'll be some more indictments coming down. I think there'll be a lot of things revealed in the public this week that is information that we really don't have yet. So keep half an ear to the, to the media. Don't get entrenched in it. Don't get entangled in it. Just be a little involved in it because I think you're going to see a lot of things come out and be revealed that weren't. Um, and also what I want to say is we are coming on to a phase of the moon, which will be a new moon towards the middle of the month. As we grow closer to that, we are undergoing a great time of releasing. And that's why you will see breakups. You will see breakaways. You will see you acting out independent things like I've been wanting to break away from this for years and then you finally do or other people will be doing those things because this is really a psychological breakthrough. This is time when we revisit, um, we're in retrospect, relationships, things that have that RE in front of it, all those rewords, you know, revisit, redo, um, reevaluate, relationship. That is what this month and the next few months are really about. Um, <laughs> and this is really about um, seeing what needs to be changed. I'm looking at my notes. And taking the action to get where you want to go. And that's why I say, make sure that you really, you know, allow the universe to see that you're serious about the things you're trying to bring into your life. If you are wishing and hoping for another job or a career move, do the work to get there. 
If you're hoping for a new relationship, clean out the old stuff, you know, prepare what you need to do in order to get into the space that really truly is your passion. Um, we also have uh, coming in on Thursday and Friday, the asteroid Juno opposite Pluto. Juno is the partnership asteroid. That's for marriages, relationships, partnerships and business, everything. Um, when that energy comes in Thursday, Friday, what will be played out and revealed in the universe are triangles, interference, infidelity, um, familial interference, um, differences of opinion. Um, this is an energy where you really want to watch who's involved because things are going to get revealed and what are they doing? This is old loves. It's also past lives. It is repetitive behaviors. So those are really going to be coming out big time this week and next. Um, the best day, if you have to have any serious conversations with people, or if you need to publicly speak or present anything to a group, your best day for that is Wednesday. We've got Mercury trining Jupiter, which is clarity in talk, in presentation of words. It's a good day for speeches, conversations, um, really a good day also for learning. So just, um, make sure that you, you know, review anything that you're going to be doing or talking about, because, um, this is a time when, again, we've got Venus and Mercury going into shadow to go retrograde. Venus already is retrograde, will be retrograde for a lot of time. So this is reduce, 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 check everything twice. If you're traveling, check the schedule, check everything, make sure your plans, your rides are online, your everything, you've got your credit cards, you've got your license, double check your bags, everything. Cause this is an energy where things are going to need that focus and attention from us in order to run the right way. Um, so again, Sunday is that Venus star point. I'm going to do another video and a little um, blurb about that on all of my social media. So if you're really trying to manifest anything in your life, this is one of the most powerful times Sunday, this coming Sunday, one of the most powerful times in the last four or five years to manifest what you truly want in your life and set your intentions, set your goals write, write them down, dream your dream, do a vision board. Very, very powerful. We've got Venus, Kazemi, the sun, and this is the Venus star point. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. All right. And now I'm going to get to our subject and look at some comments and get to our subject tonight about um, the clicks and things. So let me say hello to everybody. Hope you got the astrology down. All right. Hello, Janine. How are you? I've got Sarah, Janine, Marianne. Haven't seen Marianne in a while. Hope you're doing good. Anita Mina, Cheryl Silverman. Love you. Um, got Pauline on. I have Michelle. I've got Monica. Hope you're doing good, sweetie. I have Colleen. Got everybody here in the soul space tonight. How nice is this? So I wanted to do a few minutes and talk about clicks because, um, put my notes away. Because I went through a hard time somewhere around 2014, actually, was my um, really tough time with clicks. Now, you would think that I got to watch this shirt here. You would think that um, we go through clicks in high school, right? And then they're over. They're not. Clicks are not age sensitive. That's one thing I've absolutely know in my life. Um, clicks and friend groups that get kind of mean girlish or mean guys, because men go through this too, um, happen all the time. I'd love to hear your stories. If you want to come in or, or phone in, please do. Um, I don't think there have any age limitations. I think that the reason, main reason why people uh, create clicks or get involved in clicks, quite frankly, is it's a power, power thing. Um, clicks are definitely um, meant to make people feel powerful. And that goes for not only the people who create them, but it also goes for the people who are in them. All right. And I'm going to tell you my personal story really quick. And then I'm going to tell you, I actually came up with like the sequence of clicks that maybe if I go through this, it'll help you guys understand. Because it, it, I think sometimes we get involved in these things actually when we're older, because there's lessons to be learned here and they're very powerful lessons. So back in 2014, it, well, actually it was like closer to 2011, I met a group of people. Um, I started going out again. I was recently divorced and I actually started like really going out socially a lot. And I was in a lot of clubs. I loved to dance. I would go out and hear live music, you know, going to um, concert venues, music venues, all kinds of things, and really got into the whole music scene locally where I live. Met wonderful people and also partook of some amazing musicians. I mean, we have on Long Island, I live on Long Island, New York, and we have, I know we're always notorious for these things in the news, but we have some of the most amazing local music scene that you'll ever see on Long Island. So I just 
met people. My best friend and I were both getting divorced at the same time. We started going out. We met a lot of people um, that just, we were friends. You know, we knew them. Uh, if there was a, a time period where I could walk in any place on Long Island that was a venue or a club scene and everyone knew me, you know? So it was really nice. It was kind of a heady feeling and it was a great group of people. I've never been a drinker. I've never drank much at all. Um, at this time in my life, I was not drinking at all. I'm not drinking now. I, I haven't really drank for a very long time since I'm young. And um, had this great friend group and met a group of girls. We were probably about, I'd say 20 or 30 of us actually, and some boyfriends. And um, we used to go out like every Friday and Saturday night. We just had a group. We knew where everyone was going and we went. And when we walked into these places, we always had front row tables. The owners of the places all knew us. It was a very heady time in my life because I never experienced that when I was younger or when I was in high school, I was a workaholic, very serious at a young age, built a career, you know, um, accumulated things in my life and um, was on that kind of fast track. So when I started to do this, it was like my second childhood. And I used to have a joke. I always said, wow, my second childhood is so much better than the first because I've got money to party and do stuff. And, you know, so it was just a really heady, beautiful time. And I remember always feeling so close to these people because we were all in the same boat. We were like, you know, in our 40s, 50s and, you know, finding ourselves divorced after long marriages or breakups. And we were all, you know, would just go out and have a good time and there was no pressure and we didn't have to worry about, um, you know, going out and getting harassed by anybody because we were always in a group. And it was just really, really great. And the laughs and the fun and just really awesome people. And I thought I was great. I thought I was doing wonderful. I had this beautiful new social people didn't really know any of my older friends that from, from years past, because when you get divorced, you know, they take sides or you just have things that, you know, I had a kind of a scandalous thing happen with my ex. So I really couldn't have those friendships anymore. And so it was just a really great that I had these people. So I felt very powerful, you know, looking back when I was with that group, it was really nice when it was going good because it was an easy way for me to feel powerful because I had been strongly rejected at that time in my life by someone that was some most important person in my life. And I also had had tremendous loss. I had lost my parents. I had lost some very close friends all in a very short period of time. And so going out and seeing this click in this friend group was so wonderful to just feel accepted and feel like Wow, you see, I I might be have been rejected or lost those other people, but I I'm accepted and I'm I'm home with these people, you know. Very heady time, like I said, felt great until it didn't. And so what started to happen after I guess maybe a year, year and a half, then maybe it was just a transition time for me. But as I stated, I've always been a more serious person. Like I'm not really the type of person that goes out every night of the week. I think I had my stint with that. It was short lived. And then I'm like, I run a business. I got to get back to work. I got to, you know, take care of my life. And when I started to do that and I didn't conform to the friend group anymore, and I wasn't out every Friday and Saturday night, then I started to feel a little excluded. Then it was like, well, where are they? Like, did they go here or did they go there? I like suddenly wasn't in the text or I wasn't in the, at the time, Facebook group or, you know, it was strange. And I didn't know why. And then, you know, I think you've all probably experienced a similar thing. It's great when it's going great because we're at a point, point in our life and we meet people or we click with people because we have something in common with them. We're all in the same boat. We either all newly single or we all like tennis or we all play pickleball or we all are boaters or there's something that we all have in common. And it feels really great and new because the people that maybe we know for a long time, maybe even though they know us really well, they don't have that in common with us. Maybe it's a hobby we got when we were a little older or maybe it's a new hobby or whatever. So when I started to deviate from doing the, that particular thing that we all had in common, which was going out and dancing and drinking and having a good time, when I started to deviate from that, I wasn't considered in the group anymore by some people. I was looked upon as, and especially because there was alcohol involved, I think, I was looked upon as, you know, a couple of group members even said to me when I would hang out, What's, where you been? What do you think you're better than us? And so it was really a red flag. And so I had been dating somebody and I was giving time to that. And then I had brought him around the group a few times and experienced a lot of cattiness because the girl group that I was really close to, the girls in the group, especially one who was a leader, um, she didn't like me having a boyfriend. She wanted it to be the girls night out all the time. And so that was a problem. 
So I tried to ride that wave. And then what happened was I wasn't long before I was completely excluded from the group. And it, when I look back, it happened very um, innocently. I Someone would put something on Facebook and I commented on it innocently. Like I didn't agree with the comment. Like they asked an opinion about something. And I said, oh, well, I like it better this way. And the person got really offended. And it was not meant to offend anyone. It was just, I was just very benignly and very, you know, innocently saying, oh, I like, you know, it's like saying you like vanilla, I like chocolate, something like that. And that was it. I was suddenly persona non grata. Like I would literally go out where they were and just to hang out with my friends and they wouldn't talk to me. And these are middle-aged people, you know. So what happens is clicks get formed because we feel powerful or some leader or a couple of leaders in the group feel powerful. And they take on the role of planning everything in the group and who's in the group and who's out of the group. And so this goes on. And then maybe you start to change a little bit because maybe you were on that heightened trek of going out all the time and, you know, but that's not real life. So then you got to change a little bit or maybe, you know, you're boating every weekend with these people, but then something else happens in your life and you can't boat all the time. You got to do other stuff and then you're looked upon as not great. Or maybe you're in with a group that drinks a lot and you're the one who doesn't drink so much. And so now you're the odd man out. You know, there's always something. It starts out really well and you're all in the same gear but then if you deviate from the gear, yeah, something happens. So clicks are formed because they are power, they make us feel powerful. We join clicks because it makes us feel powerful. And you got to admit that to yourself. Whatever click you're in, when, where it's grooving and you're in it, man, you're powerful. I mean, to be on a dance floor, um, really like, you know, vibing out with like 20 of your friends, like you're, you're on a high, like you're in the group. You're just, you know, ca being carried. So it's a great high. And then when you lose that and suddenly every weekend, especially, you know, now the boyfriend didn't work out for whatever reason or, you know, works a little slow, whatever. Now when you're like home every weekend and you don't even have the friend group, that's that's the tough part. So admit it. You liked being part of the group. At one time, you really liked it. It was fun. You were the in crowd. You, you were accepted. You were cool, um, especially if you were recently rejected by someone. It felt really, this new friend group felt like, oh my God, I, I can't believe I got so many friends. Let me keep taking these pictures, putting them on Facebook. I'm in a group. I got people. Look, look, I got a posse, right? It feels good. We're human. It feels good, especially if we're coming down off a sad time or a painful time. But what we don't realize when we're on the high is that the click, the friend group has rules and the rules are unspoken and they're subtle and they're insidious. And so they are exclusive. They exclude. But the thing is, the unspoken rule is just one rule. But we don't know it until we're a victim of it. And you know what that one rule is? That one rule is act like us or you're out of the group. Act like us or you're out of the group. And that's what a click is. And it can be a spiritual click. You can join a prayer group. And if you deviate from some of the scripture, they interpret it one way and you interpret it another way, all of a sudden things get a little sketchy and you're not invited everywhere or you see a picture on, on social media or you hear about something that happened and you didn't know about it, right? And so very slowly you start to feel excluded or maybe you say something innocently, you know, you blurt something out that you didn't mean and, you know, a really good friend would understand, oh, she didn't mean that. But the click wants you to be exactly like them. So now it's an offense. You're offensive. You did something you shouldn't have done. And they're not going to let that die, by the way. They're never going to let it die. And they're going to accuse you of not letting it die. Because once again, you're not like them. And the golden rule is, the unspoken rule of the click is, be like us or you're out of the group, right? It could be moms. I have a friend of mine who was in a mom group that was all anti-vaxxers. And she had to be vaccinated for her job. And suddenly things started to get a little dicey in the group. So it could be anything. All right. One false move and could be something innocent or some innocent disagreement. And all of a sudden you're unclicked. You're unclicked from the click. And you can almost hear it in the room. It's like, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden they're somewhere on Saturday and you're not, or they're having coffee at somebody's house, but you're not or they're going to a concert, but you're not, or they're out on the boats, but you're not, or they're playing pickleball, but you're not. And that's how it goes. And now you feel upset. 
suddenly you've maybe even lost interest in the group. Maybe you're uncomfortable to go where they go, right? So now it's a question of, but I like to do those things and I want to still be able to do them, but I don't want to go there because it's just awkward, right? So now it affects, affects your life and it's affecting part of your life that shouldn't even be affected. So that power trip you were on is a really hard landing. And it's no fault of yours. It's no fault of anyone's. It's just the way human people work. It, we are designed to go after power and to be powerful. And one of the ways we do that is in click group, in friend groups. So this is just the way of the world. So it still hurts when you find out that you're not part of the in circle. You're not part of the friend group. You're being excluded. You're being um, maybe ostracized in some ways, depending on the group. It's very hurtful. But the reason why it hurts most of all is because nine times out of 10, we're in the click, we're in the friend group because we're trying to avoid feeling an emotion or we're being distra distracting ourselves or we're running away from something we really should be facing. And that's how we got ended up. That's how we ended up in the click group to begin with. So maybe you're going through a divorce or maybe you're feeling, you know, like you did in high school, you know, you're feeling like, oh, I didn't run fast enough on the track team or whatever. There's some pain, some wound, some rejection, some sadness that you're not working through and being in the click group makes you feel better about yourself and about this thing and about everything. And I know that was definitely true for me because when I got excluded finally from the click group, when I got unclicked, I had to go home and really sit with the fact that I was going home to an empty house and no one was coming home. And that was a hard part of my life until someone again was living in my house with me and things like that. But for that period of time, and that's why I really think it was divinely orchestrated. I think that God kind of brought me into this wave and the click group and really nice people. And some of them I'm still genuinely fond of. Some of them were kind of mean to me, but some of them I'm fond of um, and still see. And, you know, others are awkward. But I really believe God put me in there because I needed a healing time. I needed time before I could really sit in my own healing. I needed the distraction. I needed to like go a little numb in order to be able to eat the plate of food that was in front of me. It was like if I had just tried to devour everything that was happening in my life at once, I would have choked on it. So I needed that fine time, that fun time, that respite from it to go back to it and deal with it. So I know that was the purpose of my click. Um, I needed to experience that. And I also think it was healing for me in some ways to experience being accepted and part of something um, at that time in my life. Inevitably, it in ended up wounding me. But I think that was because I had to go back to the original wound in order to be really healed and move forward and become the spiritual person that I am. So that was my story in the click group. And so the end of that story is so then I begin to feel excluded, right? I'm unclicked, okay? I, I said something wrong on Facebook or I didn't, I didn't hang out as much, right? So now, you know, I'm, people are like, oh, she's not really one of us. She's Because, you know, silent rule of the click group is be exactly like us or you're out of the group. So now what happens is you start to realize you're alone. And at first you sit home alone and you're totally obsessed with the click group. <laughs> you're like, you tell yourself you're not, but you're creeping them on Facebook. Where'd they go? Where are they? Did they do that again? I can't believe they didn't invite me. I didn't really do anything. What the hell is wrong with these people? You know what? I never wanted to be part of that anyway. They're also immature. Oh my God, they need to grow up, right? You go through that phase, right? And that's normal. I went through it, I, you know. So now you're alone and you're like looking out the window, like the kid looking out the window to see who's playing in the yard next door, right? It's like, it literally is like the wounded child syndrome. And then all of a sudden, gradually, because you're alone, because this was my summer of 2014, I had like no one. Click group dumped me. Best friend in the world wasn't talking to me. Boyfriend that didn't work out. I was like, okay, I got a dog and I'm going to the beach. <laughs> and I healed and I stayed in complete solitude. And so what happened was gradually that alone and that anger and that bitterness of like, who do they think they are and all that stuff in the click, gradually that turned into solitude. And I was really grateful for my time by myself. And I used to go out by myself. I'd go to dinner by myself. I'd go out to hear music by myself. I met some really great people. And some of the click group actually ended up being friends of mine outside the group because the same thing happened to them. Um, and it's a whole long story, but you know, the, the wheel of karma really does go around, I have to say, and I never wish that on anybody, but it's just interesting to watch. I don't get involved. I have no 
love, hate, any feeling at all about things like that, but I just like to observe it and learn from it. Um, but that gradual alone time that turns into solitude, what happens is we start to heal because we're spending time with ourselves. We're not like out in the club till two in the morning, running around like crazy. Everything's funny and just doing so much great stuff, you know. Um, now we're sitting home a little bit more. We're taking walks on the beach. We're meditating. We're going to yoga. We're doing the things we're really supposed to do, right? And all of a sudden, we have time to really think about who we want to be and what we really want to do and how do we really want our life to be. It's not so much noise. It's hard to plan your life when you're, you know, for like two feet away from the band. <laughs> so, especially when there's a cute drummer. But anyway, um, so you begin to enjoy your alone time. And then the funny thing happens because you become more observant and you slow your roll. You start to make really better choices of where you seek pleasure. And now you start finding pleasure in really healthy things. You know, you eat differently, you drink differently, you make different friend choices. You start to like really see people for who they are because you're in tune to yourself. You're not on the outside looking and observing every single little thing to judge. Now you're sitting with yourself and that's when you really start to heal. And suddenly you realize that you never really vibed with that friend group to begin with. It was just a way to pass time and avoid your feelings. And that's why we end up in clicks. So what I suggest is step away from the click. If you're the one who created the click, you got a little work to do on yourself, all right? Because you're, you're looking for pleasure and power in way the wrong place. We can be so powerful when we exercise our own agency. I remember the leader of the click one time saying to me, you know, I'm on a crowded dance floor and she's dancing with me and she comes up to me and she says, do you have pink, li pink lipstick on? And I said, yeah, I was wearing a pink shirt. I said, yeah, I have pink lipstick on. And she goes, don't ever wear pink lipstick. We don't wear pink lipstick. You have to wear red lipstick when you go out in the evening. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like freaked out every time I went out, like make sure I didn't have pink lipstick on. <laughs> That's crazy. It's crazy. But you get caught up in the wave of it. You get caught up in the vibe. And then when they do you a favor and unclick you, um, after a little while, you know, you're stung and you're wounded, but after you lick your wounds for a little while and you do need time to lick your wounds, but after you do that, then you realize like, well, I want to go out and wear pink lipstick tonight and ain't nobody ever going to tell me not to wear pink lipstick again. And you feel really good and it, you just live your life and you live it without in need of click. I have a lot of, um, people I'm friendly with, don't have a lot of friends, but I have a lot of people I'm friendly with and I like them. They're nice people. I call them my fringe family but um, they're not my friends. I really uh, am in transition right now. I don't really have a friend group at all. Not because I don't, I dislike anyone. I'm fond of a lot of people, but I just um, have been living almost a monastic life. I need to get out more. But I think we, we fall prey to clicks when we're really looking to be accepted and be part of something. So I'm going to go to comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this because it's a lot. I know it's a lot. Um, so let me just refresh here. Okay. So I'd love to hear your comments. Yeah, Monica says that's been me for years. Jessica says with age comes wisdom. Certainly, we hope, right? I don't know. In my case, maybe I was a late bloomer. Um, don't feel I need to be out there anymore. And you probably don't. Exactly. I think that um, what happens is what I started to do was like, you know, I remember I'd wake up in the morning on a Saturday and I'd take a long walk with my dog around the beautiful village where I live. And then I'd go to yoga and I'd like, you know, kind of just like, you know, journal or write or read a lot of, you know, sutras or poetry or just, you know, autobiographies. I would go out in my backyard and work. And I really was like healing, you know, it felt good to be grounded. And then when I did see a lot of the group, um, I would actually enjoy speaking to them more because I wasn't in that pressure. So it worked really in my favor. Um, yeah, Jessica says, say more acquaintances. Um, and I think that the energy changed also. I think that what happens is, um, I'm going to go to cards in a few minutes, guys. I think what happens with the friend groups are we grow and as we grow, our vibration increases and we vibe higher. And that's why I say now I like to have, when I do have friend groups, I like to think of them as my family of frequency because whatever frequency you're vibing on, 
if the people around you are vibing on the same or very similar frequency, those, those real connections are going to last a lot longer. When you don't vibe on the same frequency as other people to begin with, you're not going to last in that vibe. So I just want to give you guys a couple of ways that you identify clicks because I, I want you to be on the lookout for these because clicks are really not healthy. And there are also work clicks also. I know I, I work in an industry where clicks are rampant and um, I basically am not a joiner because of that reason. I don't really go to a lot of events. I pick and choose because I don't like to see the clicks sometimes because I can pick up energy of people who are not in the clicks getting wounded or hurt or not invited. And I am all about inclusion. And I just want to say, uh, before I just go through some points about how to identify a click, I just want to say that the Zencuda Soul Space community is created because everybody's in and nobody's out. Everybody's in here and nobody's out. This is unity in the highest octave we can find. So you will never be judged in this space. It's a safe space. When I do events, the same thing. If you come into any of our lives, if you um, take any of my classes or come to me for a reading, everybody's in, nobody's out. It is not a click. It's a community. And we're all here to really support each other. And that's how you can tell the difference between a click and a community. Clicks don't really support your individuality. They want you to be exactly like them. Communities are supporting your independent thinking. I want you to come away from my show here, my podcast, and spark something that makes you go seek more and learn knowledge and, and do something that you're really passionate about. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to follow your dreams, your hopes. I don't want to be an influencer. I want to be an inspiration, all right? Big difference. No one should ever want to be an influencer. Humans should not be influenced. We're influenced enough. So clicks usually have one or two leaders who decide who joins the group. That was true in my case. Um, clicks focus on maintaining their status. Very true. We would The leaders of the group would get very upset if we entered a restaurant or a club or a venue and we didn't have you know, the, the private table, the bottle service, the table up front or the table in the VIP. It would not go good. All right. We had to have a status. Um, members of the click tend to be more concerned with keeping a good relationship within the click rather than making friends outside the click. Absolutely. Um, there was a lot of judgment about people who were not in the click. You were even told like who to talk to, who to not talk to. And these are adults. Um, and as a result of that, members of the click are pressured to conform to certain standards to be part of the group. Individuality is not encouraged or rewarded. Exactly. Be like us or you're out of the group. Um, and clicks are mean even to members within the group. Like don't wear a pink lipstick. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also clicks may pressure their members to make poor choices. Like I would be very pressured to drink. I did not drink, but I was very pressured to drink. I have a pretty strong will, so I don't get pressured easily, but, um, you know, they pressure you just like in high school, you know, they pressure you to, Oh, try this, you know, here, pop some acid, you know, all that crap. Um, so where am I here? Okay. So Monica just shared the show, uh, work clicks for sure. And I think that, um, Work clicks are hard because a lot of times they make us question our work performance and nine times out of 10, you're doing really great and you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. There was just a click there way before you got there and there'll be a click there way before you, you, um, you, uh, leave, you know, so clicks are just, and I, I think also sometimes the reason why clicks happen at work is because we, this is a whole other show, but we act out our familial drama at, at work believe it or not, there's someone at your job that's a member of your family, like identical, like you can pair them up, you know, like match game. Um, but at work, what happens is we're more hypersensitive to the way we appear to others, right? Our status, our way we look out in the world, especially if you don't just have a job, but a career. And so we become hypersensitive to looking right, talking right, being right, fitting in, you know, like I have a work wardrobe. I have a thing, clothes I wear on the show. I have clothes I wear out because they're all an image, right? Um, a persona. So at work, we have personas. And I think that's why the clicks become rampant because certain personas, and especially at work, you have a lot of hierarchy, you know, they're the manager or they're the department or she's the director or she's, you know, the head, whatever, um, the VP, the, you know, and I've had just about every title known to man. So none of that really impresses me. Um, and so uh, I try to take people on an individual basis, but I steer clear of the egos. And especially in the industry I'm in, in real estate, we have a tremendous amount of egos 
And so I just keep to myself a lot. I do a really great job at what I do for my clients, my customers, and the people that I work for. And um, I don't have any need to be out there, you know, saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. I know who I am. I know what I bring to the table. And I'm not afraid to eat alone, as they say. So I'm going to go to cards. And Bobby made me this really cute little stand up for my cards tonight. So I'm going to make sure I'm on camera. That's great. Who should I pick first? Let's see. Um, oh, always have favorites. And the reason why people have favorites at work is the click mentality. Remember the unwritten rule? Be like me or you're out of the group. Be like us or you're out of the group. So the manager picks a, um, a, a favorite, a minion that she knows will do it exactly the way that she tells them to do it. They don't think for themselves. That's the pets. That's the pets. That's the way it works. So if you're someone who thinks for themselves or likes to suggest solutions that a person higher up than you didn't think of, you will never progress. That's just the way business works unless you have a very exceptional boss that you work for. And I'm telling you the truth. Okay. I've been in business all my life. <laughs> so I'm going to um, pick a card for Colleen. I'm going to do Colleen first. I'm going to work backwards tonight. So I'm going to do Colleen first. Colleen, how are you doing? All right. I'm going to shuffle, 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 shuffle. And of course we have um, Tuesday Tarot where you can see the cards that I pick. I don't, I'm not getting a lot of hits on Tuesday Tarot. So if I don't get a lot of hits on them, we ain't going to keep doing them. Okay. So for Colleen, I have the Ace of Wands, the King of Wands upside down. I have the Ten of Wands right side up. And I've got the eight of pentacles right side up. So Colleen, king of wands is a male person who's really got his stuff together, but can be a little bit selfish, a little bit me, me, me. Um, the king of wands is someone that maybe can be a little bit dominating, but more dominating like for selfish reasons. Like he wants to um, get his own way a lot. That's the king of wands. So if there's an energy like that around you, this is coming in upside down. So it could be someone in the past. And then I have this 10 of wands. Now, the fact that I have the king of wands and the 10 of wands here is very significant for me because the king of wands is definitely coming through as a personality that is a bit dominating, selfish, me, 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 almost like an Aries type of energy, um, Arian, somebody who's not as evolved as they should be. And when I have that card near the 10 of wands, what that means for me is that this person is really putting a lot of stuff on you, kind of dumping stuff on you that is not yours to carry. You're carrying the burdens that don't belong to you. So you need to release and let go. This new moon coming in towards the middle of the month is a great time to do it because this person who's creating this energy is blocking this abundance from coming through. This is a card of hard work paying off, but it hasn't happened yet because you're allowing this person to block your abundance because you're carrying burdens, you're giving your energy to all this crazy making that this person is doing, all these demands that this person is doing. And by doing that, you're not focused and taking care of your own stuff and getting things done. So you've got to reverse, pivot, get some things done, my dear, because it is not good that you are giving too much of yourself to somebody else. Um, it could be a Taurus energy, absolutely because it's somebody who's like stubborn. They're just like charging in, do it this way. I need it this way. What's the matter? How come you didn't do this? I thought I told you this. You know, we spoke about this, that kind of an energy. All right. Um, next card I'm going to pull is for Joanne Avitas. Possible love interest she wants us to know. Okay, Joanne. So now, Joanne, if you were in um, here for the first part of the show, Astro astrologically, we've got a lot of things happening with love, especially Sunday is um, the 13th, 12th, the 13th. That is Venus Kazemi. Venus is everything that we love, love life, things that matter. With that um, conjuncting the sun, Venus is actually in between the earth and the sun exact. What that means is that it's super highlighted. It's a Venus star point day, wonderful day to manifest love. So if there's someone you're looking for, particularly a type of person, something you have to end or clear up in order to bring the person in, do it because Sunday is the day for a four-year stretch, starting a new eight-year cycle for love. Most powerful day in the last four years, and it starts a new eight-year cycle. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, you asked about love and love came up for you, babe. 
So first card I have here, this is my, this is my four of cups. And the four of cups is something being offered to you. There's a love coming in for you that you are not seeing. You're looking down at the choices that you have, but you're being divinely handed. Is that literally the hand of God being divinely handed yet a new choice or another choice that you don't see? You're not looking at it. So look up, not down. I always say when you're looking for a love or a romantic interest, make sure you're reaching up, not down. A lot of times if we're lonely or in between relationships, we will settle for someone less than desirable. So this is a card that really tells you look up for love. You are being handed something and brought something divinely guided and you're too focused on the cups that you have already. The next card is the nine of pentacles, which is a card of nostalgia. It's almost a card. I feel like this is like a mom energy or an older mom like energy coming in. And the reason this energy is coming in is almost as like a um, sounding board. Even if this is an energy of someone who has passed over or someone that is still on this earth, this is someone that they want you to frame your questions about the love coming in frame it as though you are looking at them it through you are looking at it through their eyes for instance if this energy is a passed over mother or um, grandmother would they approve of this would they approve of this love would they approve of the way this person is or who this person is would they approve of the way you're acting if it's a mentor now in your life you need to sit and talk to them and really talk to them about what's coming in, what will come in for you when it does, if it has not already, because I feel like it's very close or it's something or ongoing. Talk to them about it and see how it looks in their eyes as you're telling them the story. This is, as I said, this is representative of a feminine energy, female energy, very nostalgic motherly. Okay. And then the next card that I got is the best card in the deck for love. It's actually what we refer to in the tarot as the marriage card. And as you can see in this card, you have this beautiful, happy couple. It looks like they just got married. They're walking into a castle. It's the family card. This is a soulmate kind of love coming in for someone. So the story I'm being told with these cards is you have a choice yet to make or that's yet to come in or someone that is really around you and is really watching you and looking at you and is a relationship for you, but you've yet to acknowledge it. And that someone, an either an earthbound or passed over mom type of energy or mother energy, grandmother energy, a maternal energy, is someone that you need to use to evaluate, their use their standards to evaluate this thing, this, this relationship, this energy. And then when you do that, you're going to have a fresh perspective and I see the happy relationship. Could it be that maybe you're not appreciating something or don't appreciate something that will be coming in for you? because I feel like you're not looking up, like you're, you're too distracted by something maybe that already is and not seeing the newness, all right? So definitely uh, you wanna purge whatever is in the past because if you still have that energy um, around you, new energy can't come in, all right? Next card I'm gonna pull is for um, Marianne Sabatino, okay? Um, Okay, Marianne, I'm going to pick a couple of cards for you. Okay. We've got the judgment card, which means new beginnings. The lover's card. This card is so indicative of um, energy coming in this week that is interference in love, obstacles, um, infidelity, uh, family members butting in. It's just interference in a love relationship. And then the final card is this card of competition passing. So what I'm getting here, Mary Ann, is um, new beginnings. Something comes to a head with family or with you know a, a relationship this week, and it's interference. It's something that um, is an obstacle, like noise, like just something. It's like it reaches a head, comes to a head, and then I feel like it's over. Like you finally see things with a fresh perspective. The conflict's over. I don't feel like the relationship's over. I feel like the relationship has a rebirth. And I feel like this is something to do with family, not romance. Um, and I feel like as this thing progresses and gets heightened and kind of blows up this week, then 
it's okay after that. Like things are calmer and, and the conflict is rectified. So there's some healing going on here. There's definitely a week for healing where something just kind of explodes, but it's exploding so that it can clear the debris and start a whole new beginning for you. All right. Next up, I'm going to, Joanne says many thanks. She's been purging her past. Very good to do. Clearing the way. Yeah, I think that there's something that wants to come in. It could even be someone who's already around you. May even be something who comes in through work or something. But this, this next energy for the next 18 months coming in is definitely an energy that will bring it. Okay. So next up, I was just picking somebody. Um, Colleen, I did. Okay. Um, I'm going to do Monica. We'll pull some cards for Monica. How's that, Monica? I'm going to give these a good shuffle because I feel like they have not been shuffled enough. Boy, I thought you guys were going to comment and be all over that click and friend group stuff, but you aren't. You can never plan what's going to happen in the soul space. Okay. Ah, oh, we've got the Ten of Swords in reverse, which means it's over. Queen of Pentacles, which I feel like is you. And then, yeah. So when I say the Ten of Swords, which means it's over, the, I'm saying the energy of sleepless nights, you know, something that's been torturing you, making you lose sleep, worry. I feel like it's it's leaving. It's over. It's you're, you're now coming into a more peaceful time. And the reason why I think that is because the next two cards, I have the Queen of Pentacles, which I feel like is you. You're sitting on the throne. You've got abundance coming in. I feel like for you, Monica, this is a very, very important time to dissolve and break away from relationships that are extremely codependent or that you lose your power and don't take care of yourself in. And I feel like when you do that, you're going to find new people around you, new relationships and a new relationship with yourself where you give yourself the recognition you deserve. So keep on the track, whatever you're doing. I feel like the energy changed since the last time I did cards for you. Whatever was really keeping you up at night, making you feel like tortured and, and uncomfortable, that energy is really passing or has already passed and you're coming into your own. So keep doing what you're doing, rely on yourself and don't, um, you know, don't make yourself do too much for another person and lose yourself because I feel like that was the energy and you're rectifying it. And that's really, really great. All right. I think I only have about five minutes left. Yeah. So I'm going to sign off now, guys. But if you tune into my social media, I'm going to be doing some more card pulls. We have um, Tarot Tuesday in the Zancuda Soul Space YouTube channel every Tuesday. Please subscribe to that if you haven't already. I don't annoy you with notifications. I just am trying to get my subscribers up so we can do lives during the week there and be in that community as well. And also let me know if you guys would be interested in some Soul Space merch because I could have some t-shirts and things made up, but I don't know if you guys are interested in that. So let me know. Drop me a line, okay? And let me know how you like tonight's show. I'd really like to hear. Thanks so much for joining me in the soul space. This is the place where everybody's in, nobody's out. So choose your friend groups really carefully. See you next Monday at seven o'clock right here in the soul space.